Hi guys, I hope you're good since last video. So in this video, we are going to uh, straight away into the explanation and there won't be any uh, hands-on part because this is more about understanding how to avoid stack overflows, what can be in the stack, how much data can you put on the stack, how can you evaluate it, just seeing some calculations. So I had this question in my mind, just wondering, um, how do I know how long a string can be in the stack? What's the maximum size of a string? What the maximum size of a, an integer, for example? So here we are going to go through that. Um, we're going to use one megabyte as a size of a stack. And from that, we're going to make our calculations. So let's go into the explanation part and we will uh, go through different examples, which are going to be just uh, explained through the slides. There won't be any hands on parts. Please like and subscribe and uh, let's get started. Stack max allocation. Yes, so let's start with the question. How to determine if an array will fit on the stack, for example, or how stack allocation works in Rust, and best practices to avoid stack overflows. So the first point, stack versus heap allocation in Rust. So we've seen that already before, but uh, here we give in more details. Stack allocation, the characteristics, Fast allocation and deallocation. Memory is managed in a last in, first out, so LIFO order. Limited size, typically a few megabytes, but it can vary depending on the system and the settings. As we've seen in the previous videos, you can change the settings. Usage for fixed size, data known at compile time, function parameters, local variables and arrays with a known size. Now the heap allocation, the characteristics, is slower allocation and deallocation compared to the stacks because there are some uh, operations happening. Memory is uh, managed dynamically. Much larger size limits compared to the stack. Usage for data that needs to be uh, live beyond the, the scope of the function. For large data structures like uh, big arrays or vectors, for example. The second point, stack size limitations. So the default stack size, the default stack size uh, for uh, thread can vary by uh, operating systems and compiler settings. The common default sizes are for Linux 8 megabytes and Windows 1 megabytes. Why stack overflows occurs? So allocating data that exceeds the stack's capacity so deep or infinite recursion. So we've seen that uh, when you do too many recursions also, you can get uh, those issues of stack overflows. We, are, we have uh, done that in the hands-on part of, of the stack overflow video. So determining array size and stack fit. Calculating array size. To determine if an array will fit on the stack, you need to calculate it. You need to calculate its uh, total size in bytes. Okay, so here we got the formula. So the total size in bytes. Size of one element multiplied by the number of elements. So the size of one element in bytes multiplied by the number of elements. So in this first example here, we see that arrays of type U8, 1 million the number, array of 1 million bytes. Why? Because the size of a U8 is 1 byte. The total size is 1 byte multiplied by 1 million. So it's 1 million bytes, 1 megabyte. That will be our basis of all the calculations. Just to make it round and easy. So checking against uh, stack size, estimate 
compare the total size of your array to the approximate stack size. And uh, remember that the stack also contains other local variables and function call information. So it's not easy actually to, uh, to, uh, to plan it in advance, but you have to, uh, yeah, you have to have this in mind. And also that there are some other variables that are used in the stack size. So consideration, avoiding allocation large, uh, um, large arrays. So allocating large arrays, uh, more than 100 kilobytes on the stack. This is uh, just a, a contingency. So be conservative to account for all the stack usage. As we said, there can be some other also variables used on the stack at the same time. So it's not just your array or your integer size that matters. It's uh, the the, 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 the overall scope of uh, your function. So best practices uh, to avoid stack overflows. So you use just heap allocation for large arrays. Using vectors. So vector here we use uh, the type T. And the uh, growable vector for large arrays. So vector allocates the data on the heap, which makes it uh, easier. So here we just uh, using the same example that we have used before. Using the vector here, we uh, use the this sign here zero u eight means it's unsigned, um, and it's going to be a uh, one million, one megabyte on the heap. Without any issue, it will be allocated. Or you can use box as we've seen box also. It's uh, the pointer which is going to stay on the stack, but uh, the data will be allocated on the heap. So the box with the type T on the N allocates a fixed size array on the heap, okay? So here the type T on the N. So this is uh, just to, uh, to say what it is. So useful when you need uh, the performance characteristics of arrays, but the size is too large for the stack. So an example of a boxed array, here we, uh, we get another example. So box new, we create a box. We use the same example as here, and then sign U8 type on the N will be 1 million. Allocate 1 megabyte on the heap without any issues. So here we have two alternatives, vectors or boxes. And also avoid the deep recursions. So even if you do that, if there are too many recursions, so recursive functions, each recursive call adds a new frame to the stack. So for large input sizes, consider using iterative solutions or tail recursion. Uh, though Rust uh, does not guarantee tail call optimization. So check compiler warning. So the compiler is also here to help you because you can't guess everything. The Rust compiler may warn you when uh, you're allocating large data on the stack, warning. So you get this kind of message, warning, last stack frames. So pay attention to uh, these uh, warnings and consider refactoring your code. Okay. So let's use this uh, fifth point to uh, go through different examples. So stack allocation that may cause stack overflow. For example, here, here we put 10 million. So here, 10 million is going over the stack size even of uh, Linux, which we've seen it's uh, 8 megabytes if you don't change any uh, uh, settings, and 1 megabyte for Windows. So here, 10, this is going to create a stack overflow, large array, len. The problem allocating 10 megabytes on the stack may exceed the stack size limit. Solution, use a vector box, as we've seen before, to allocate on the heap. So the heap allocation using a vector, for example, here, we put a vect, we use the same uh, technique that we've used before, and we're going to put it on the on the heap like that, or we use the box, the box technique. You can pause the video or go back if you want to see those examples, because I've passed it uh, pretty quick. So the six points, check stack size, programmatic program check stack size programmatically 
while the rest doesn't provide a standard way to check the available stack size at runtime, you can set stack size manually. So in Linux or macOS, this, uh, you can do it using your environment variable. So run underscore min underscore stack environment variable or set the stack size when creating a new thread. So here what it says basically is to just change the, the configs uh, from the defaults. So here you can also use uh, threads. And uh, when you use threads, when you upload, I mean you import standard library thread, here a variable that we're gonna create using the builder method, new stack size, and here we're gonna be uh, declaring the stack size. So we can have a hand on it by doing it manually, okay? So here we, we have uh, pushed the stack size to 32 megabytes. So it's not 1000, 1000, it's 1024. So don't forget about that also. Uh, and after here, the handler, we use the builder, we use the spawn. And after here, closure, unwrap. This is just for the example here. And you put your code inside. And after you join, when you're done with the thread, as we've seen in the video, uh, talking about focusing on the threads, on the multi-threading. So here, get stack size, Unix system. So use platform specific function to get uh, the current uh, stack size. After you have some commands that you can uh, just use on the terminal to see what is the stack size, the default one, and you see how you can uh, change it. Example, using here libc crate. So there is a crate here, extend crate libc that you can use. So you use libc, get our limit, our limit, on the our limit underscore stack a function get stack size which is going to return a u size let mute limit a variable we use the air limit here air limit cure zero air limit max zero we use and save we haven't seen it yet but i'm going to make a, another video which would be the will be the last video of this uh, uh, rest um, course tutorial so unsafe, we'll talk about it after, but this is just a scope to use uh, this way to, uh, to make some uh, special commands, which I consider as being unsafe uh, in Rust. So get air limit, we use the get air limit that we have imported here, and we use the air limit stack here, and the mute that we have created here, okay? Uh, so the reference of it, mutable reference, and here we go limit that airlim curve has u size. This is a, a casting that we've seen in the previous video. And after in the main function, we can call this function here, which is going to do all those operations for us. I haven't done it before, so I'm not a specialist of it, but this is how you do it. So let's stack size, get stack size, we call the function. And after here, you'll be uh, you get printed here the stack size. So we're just reusing this uh, imports and function using a libc crate. So here, use platform specific function to get the current stack size. So you can get your your stack size using Rust. Not plat platform specific, and uh, may not work on all operating systems. But this is good to note, and uh, requires adding. Uh, libc crate to your dependencies so this is not uh, here by default you need to add it libc okay or you can just use python and you check uh, what is the stack size and after you go into your rust code and uh, you you just use this formula here to customize it uh, we have some few points to see so compiler warnings on lints so you can also enable lints you can enable warnings for large stack allocation using Clippy. So in your cargo terminal, you need to add the dependency. So Clippy, and after you put the version of it, and uh, you use the attribute here, one, Clippy, double colon, large stack arrays. So when you get the dependency, you will be able to use this uh, decorator. Check stack usage. 
So use tool like a cargo build. And after there is all this uh, command here, okay, cargo build, Z build, standard. I haven't used it, but uh, you can just uh, stop the video here and search about it and uh, immediately about to get more detailed information. Okay, so this can be used here also to get more detailed information. So summary of guidelines. Me, uh, to tell you the truth, I see it, uh, there are so many stuff to do. I'm not going to touch the default values of the stack. Um, this is going beyond my skills. I can maybe do it just to play with it, but I prefer just to move everything on the hip using box or vector to make it easy and to be able to uh, keep going into my coding without uh, being uh, blocked for a few weeks on uh, something that I don't really uh, mastered yet. So summary of guidelines. So here, a little summary. So you estimate the array size. Be cautious with array larger than 100 kilobytes. Just keep it as a, as a number in your mind. So this is 100,000, the number. So prefer heap allocation for large data. Vector box, that's the one I prefer. Monitor stack usage. Pay attention to compiler warning. So the compiler is your friend. Use tools on int to check uh, for large stack allocation. So you can use different libraries for that. Dep dependencies that you can add uh, to have those checks done. Adjust stack size if necessary. Increase the stack size for trades uh, when needed, but prefer refactoring code. So that's what I prefer also, refactoring code instead of uh, changing the default values of the stack, but you can do it. So it's possible. Uh, understanding stack frames, function calls, each function call adds a stack frame. So be careful with the recursions. So having a function call you another function or calling itself several times. So stack frames contains return address, local variables and saved registers. Okay. So that's what is uh, in the stack uh, frames. Variable lifetime, so the scope of the variables, we've seen that in previous videos. Variables are dropped when they go out of the scope. So stack memory is uh, reclaimed automatically. Okay, so you need also to be careful of the yeah, lifetimes to not get those issues. We have uh, three other points to see. 10, 11, and 12. So here the 10 practical tips. So some little tips that I wanted to add. Avoid the global large arrays. So global variables are also stored in a static memory. So uh, whatever it's global is just going to stay there. So it's going to take the space of it. So be careful of that. Uh, but initializing large data at startup can impact performances. Use efficient data structures, so for large data sets, consider using more memory efficient data structure or algorithms. Testing, so test your program with inputs that could cause a large uh, stack usage. So fail fast, make your code fail, uh, see what are the limits of your code, so, so that you can, uh, you can uh, prepare those contingencies for that. Use uh, profiling tools, to monitor memory usage after you need some monitoring that's for sure example refactoring code so here we have a little example of a refactoring code that's the point number 11 inefficient code stack allocation compute you put five megabytes using the same techniques five million here just to make it round and easy on the stack and after you process the data so this is a bit uh, too much we, we can refactor the code by doing a heap allocation, but putting that in a vector, that's what I'm going to be doing, or using box. And uh, here, let mute, you put the mute, so it's more flexible, and uh, it can grow, it can shrink, it can be uh, bigger or smaller, okay? And the 12th point, go to the conclusion, understanding memory allocation, knowing 
how and where your data is allocated helps prevent stack overflows. So we've seen the best practices. Use heap allocation for large data structures. Be mindful on the stack size limitations. On the safety and performance, Rust's ownership and safety guarantees help manage memory efficiency. So this is what Rust guarantees. But as you've seen before, you can use also the unsafe, uh, where, where you can do whatever you want at this time. So we, we're going to see this in the next uh, explanation. And uh, that will be, I think, the last video of the have a break, have a rest um, playlist. So proper allocation strategies ensure your program runs reliably. Memory calculation. Now we are going to go more into the details of uh, this memory calculation. You can't guess everything, but uh, you might be interested in uh, having more details into this part. That was my interest, so I'm going to share it with you. So to calculate how many numbers can fit in one megabyte, after here you have uh, the 1,048,000 bytes of uh, stack space. We need to consider the type of uh, the element in the array on the size. So depending on the element, it's going to take um, not the same space in the stack. So here we're going to check I32, U32, I64, just integers. Okay. So example calculation for different types. We determine the size for each element. For an I32 or U32, it's four bytes. So 32 bits. For I64, I64, U64, it's 8 bytes for each element, so 64 bits. And for an F, a float 64, each element is 8 bytes. After in the step 2, we calculate the number of elements for 1 megabyte. So for 1 megabyte, we have 1,048,576 bytes. Okay, I'm not going to repeat this number every time, but you understand. So for I32 and U32, 4 bytes per element, number of elements that fits 1 megabyte. We just do the division and we obtain 262,144 elements. So an array of type I32, this is the max number. I mean, this is the number representing 1 megabyte. So whenever you go over this number, you go over 1 megabyte, all right? So for I64 and U64, 8 bytes per element, we do the division and we have 131,072 um, okay, elements. So an array of type I64, 131,072 1, is the equivalent to 1 megabyte in size approximately in the stack. If you go over, you go over one megabyte. So here I just drawn a summary table that I'm gonna pass forward. And here you see what we've seen before: element types, size per element, okay, in bytes. And here you have the number of element for one megabyte. Okay, that's how big the number can be to reach one megabyte for each of those. Practical consideration, stack overflow. The stack has a limit size. So typically one megabyte. This one will be maybe for Windows and eight megabytes for Linux, depending on the system on the OS. Allocating a very large array on the stack can lead to a stack overflow. This you already know it now. So for larger data structures, consider using heap allocation vector to avoid the stack limitation, that's the one I prefer. So in conclusion, for an array of I32 or U32, this is the bigger number that you can fit for one megabyte. And for an array of I64 or U64, this is the bigger number that you can fit in the stack of one megabyte. But if the stack is bigger, 
you can fit more. All right. I hope that you like the, those details. I'm gonna stop here. There will be one more video in this uh, have a rest, have a rest, have a rest uh, uh, playlist. Just to end uh, the learning, we're gonna talk about the unsafe mode in Rust. Uh, this was intriguing to me, coming from Python. So we're gonna be just talking about that in the same way that as we've done uh, here. Just uh, using the slides, some few examples. We're not going to go into the terminal because uh, I think from here we need more now to, to code, practice, make some errors, learn. And uh, if you need to go deeper into the learning, you can go deep into the learning. For myself, I don't need to go deep in the learning for the moment because the objective here was learning Rust just to be able to use Pio3 and maturing. So using Rust functions, high the libraries into my Python code in order to make my Python more efficient, more performant, and also maybe have now multi-trading, real multi-trading, as uh, Python is running just in uh, one trade. Okay, hope that you like this video. Please uh, like and subscribe. Go over the videos in uh, the playlist on the channel. We need more likes, we need more subscribes and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.